Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on aneurysms. For introduction, an aneurysm is an abnormal dilatation of an artery. Aneurysms may be classified as true or false. True aneurysm is where the wall is formed totally by the three normal elements of the arterial wall, the intima, media, and adventitia. Whereas a false aneurysm is a pulsating hematoma, the cavity of which is in direct continuity with the lumen of an artery where the wall is formed by connective tissue which is not part of the vessel wall. For true aneurysms, these may be fusiform, where the dilatation is due to a segment of the vessel wall being affected around the whole circumference. Or saccular, where only part of the circumference is involved. There are many other types of aneurysms, such as congenital aneurysm, also called berry aneurysms. This occurs due to congenital defect in media at junction of vessels around the circle of Willis. It is the most common cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Commonest age of presentation is around 50 years. There is increased incidence in patients with hypertension. And also increased incidence in patients with adult polycystic kidney disease. Next is acquired aneurysms, which can be atheromatous, mycotic, sy philotic, dissecting, false, or arteriovenous aneurysms. For atheromatous aneurysm, these are most common at abdominal aorta, popliteal artery, and femoral artery. For abdominal aortic aneurysm, its incidence is rising. Risk factors include smoking and hypertension. Main complication is rupture, which may be intraperitoneal, accompanied by rapid death, or retroperitoneal. It may be a familial tendency, and may be associated with aneurysms of common iliac arteries. There may also be increased incidence of femoral and popliteal artery aneurysms. Mycotic aneurysms, commonly associated with subacute infective endocarditis. This may be due to any form of bacteremia, for example salmonella, and it is usually saccular. Syphilitic aneurysms. It is common many years ago but now rare. Tend to involve the thoracic aorta, especially the arch. It occurs due to endarteritis of vasa vasorum with inflammatory process extending into the media, and causing ischemic damage of the vessel wall. Dissecting aneurysm, also known as acute aortic dissection. Most common in thoracic aorta. Blood enters the diseased media, which splits into two layers. Associated with Marfan's syndrome. Associated with hypertension. Blood enters false lumen and then ruptures, either back into the main lumen of the artery distally, in which case the patient may survive for some time. Or externally, with sudden death. If it involves the ascending aorta, it may dissect across a coronary ostium, leading to myocardial infarction. Or across the aortic valve, causing aortic regurgitation. False aneurysm, also called pulsating hematoma, results from a small tear in an artery which is followed by hematoma, the wall of which becomes organized, and holds the aneurysm in check for some time before it ruptures. It may follow stab wounds, intra-arterial injections, or intra-arterial radiological procedures. Repaired by controlling artery above and below, closing the small defect, and evacuating the hematoma. And lastly, arteriovenous aneurysms which is sometimes known as aneurysmal varices, may be traumatic, but more commonly follow formation of an AV fistula for dialysis. This picture shows a false aneurysm, a dissecting aneurysm, and an arteriovenous aneurysm. The general complications of aneurysms are rupture, thrombosis with occlusion, such as in popliteal artery aneurysms, distal emboli from mural thrombus, pressure on adjacent structure, such as abdominal aortic aneurysm eroding vertebral bodies, femoral aneurysms pressing on femoral nerve, and popliteal artery aneurysm compressing popliteal vein leading to DVT. That's all for this video. Thank you.